Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about spring driving and tips for spring driving. Yes, and one of the tips that I'm going to give you is to do any maintenance on your vehicle that needs to be done. And I'll tell you a story about that. Uh, last week, the, my children and I took a trip down to Washington State and uh, to do a video with Jen, who uh, it, everything worked out. It was a great video and uh, got some great information for people who are driving with disabilities. And uh, Jen was really great and some powerful information that is gonna help a lot of people. And uh, anyway, going back to the maintenance on the vehicle, before we left to go down, uh, the exhaust had gone on my vehicle and the previous day I'd driven down to Kelowna to help a friend purchase a vehicle. So we drove down there and I was like, oh, I cannot listen to that <laughs> exhaust all the way down to uh, Washington State. So what we did was we took it into a, a, a mechanic here in Vernon and uh, it was a recommendation from my previous mechanic to do the exhaust work. Anyway, we went in at like nine o'clock in the morning and uh, talked to the mechanic and he put it on the hoist, told me what was wrong with it. I said, listen, while well, you're in there, you might as well fix the catalytic converter too, which is the reason that the check engine light was on on the vehicle. And uh, he said to me that uh, he'd have it done by 11 o'clock. Uh, confirmed that information with him. Uh, the kids and I went and had uh, had some breakfast, came back at 11 o'clock, the vehicle was fixed, and let me tell you that the uh, <laughs> the Honda is like driving a brand new vehicle, plus the check engine light on the dash is now out. Uh, it's amazing what a new exhaust will do on your vehicle, it's just uh, really great. So uh, one of the things I'm gonna talk to you in terms of spring uh, cleaning is uh, definitely clean your vehicle out and get any maintenance done that you need to get done. So Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is doing the moderating. Uh, he's really awesome at that. And uh, is uh, any videos that I suggest or mention, he'll get those up for you. And of course, we're gonna do questions on driver's licenses tonight. Any class of license will help you with that. Uh, Raquel is here, Edgar is here. North Northwest Indiana Elevators, hello. Tommy's here, Anthony is here. Uh, Anthony, you got your license a week ago, that's tremendous. Uh, where in the world did you get your license? And uh, <laughs> somebody's having winter. I know they're having winter in the east here and the spring is refusing to come. It's been pretty slow coming here uh, in the interior of British Columbia as well. So if you have any questions about road tests or those types of things, uh, by all means, uh, drop me a question. I can answer any questions you have about driving, starting a driving career those types of things and uh, yes the other the other thing that we're doing is uh, my friend Tim my really good friend Tim I was down visiting him it was kind of the circular on the trip to Washington State and then we went up to Vancouver Island visit my friend Tim and a few other friends on Vancouver Island and uh, he mentioned to me that uh, <laughs> that uh, Veda video every day in April so I've been trying to do that and doing pretty good Snow in Missouri is, uh, Easton is snow in Missouri. Is that unheard of or is that a regular thing? Um, <laughs> I don't think they get a lot of snow in Missouri, do they? Anyway, uh, so I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Tim, yes, Veda, video every day in April. So I've been trying to do that, get a video up every day, try and get it up in the evening. And uh, I went down and shot another one today on Hills. And uh, yeah, that was a bit of a challenge. It's always interesting standing down at the intersection and having traffic going by because sometimes, you know, most people are interested in what you're doing. Other people honk and make noise and jeer and whatnot. So <laughs> Edgar, driving on busy highways. Absolutely. So driving on busy highways, uh, you want to try and maintain your space as much as possible. Edgar, I know that's difficult in terms of vehicles behind you and vehicles to the sides, but one of the places that you can always manage your space, Edgar, on highways, especially busy highways, is in front. And yes, if you get too much space, people are gonna cut in there and those types of things, but what I suggest is, is that, you know, just let them go and have their crash somewhere else. And the other thing is, is that if people do cut into that space in front of you, oftentimes they're gonna be going faster than you anyway, so pretty quickly they're gonna be gone uh, off and you know they're not going to be a problem anymore you just sort of adjust your space again and whatnot so that's one of the things you can do and you know manage your space in front of your vehicle signal early get into the lane that you need to get into and whatnot if you need to exit off the roadway and whatnot but you know the the 
the most challenging thing and the, and the best thing that you can do is sort of manage your space. Try not to get aggravated by other drivers because obviously there's a lot of drivers on a busy highway and those types of things. And if you don't know where you're going, if it's, you know, if it's new, definitely do some work on Google Maps and definitely uh, do some work on GPS and those types of things because GPS on the fly, you know, when you're in the car and you're trying to listen to it is not the best as I just learned here in Washington State that it can be a bit challenging. So make sure you do a bit of prep work before. So the first leg of the trip to Washington State, I just really relied on the GPS on my phone and, uh, you know, I had to turn around quite a few times and those types of things. And But the second leg of the trip, when I actually studied Google Maps before I went on the trip from uh, where we were in uh, uh, Enumclaw up to uh, Port Angeles, it was actually a lot better because I'd actually done some work and studied the map and those types of things. So do that as well if you don't know where you're going on a busy road. Okay. April Creative Studios. I'm going to take the road test in a month for the third time. It seems really hard to pass the exam. Do you have any advice for passing the exam? Yes, April. All driving tests, regardless of class, regardless of where they are in the world, are all four components. Speed management, space management, observation, and communication. You have to have those four fundamentals in place, and if you don't have those four fundamentals in place, you are not going to pass a road test. Speed management, you have to do this, the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. Space management, don't get near anything else. Make sure that you stop at the correct positions on the roadways and those types of things. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about in spring driving is, is that can be a little bit more difficult because a lot of the road markings are worn out and those types of things because of plowing and whatnot in the wintertime. So that's a bit more challenging. Uh, observation, you have to scan well ahead. You have to do two shoulder checks for every turn anytime that you move the vehicle laterally. And you have to do 360 degree checks and shoulder checks and look out the back window when you're reversing. And then finally, communication. You have to communicate with other traffic effectively via uh, your lights, your horn, your signals, uh, appropriate hand gestures. Of course, don't tell people they're number one on a road test that will not let you be successful. And then finally, the position of your vehicle on the roadway. So all of those components have to be in place. And if you haven't taken driving lessons already or done a mock road test with a driving examiner, I strongly encourage you to do that, to at least take one lesson and say, hey, I want to do a mock road test to see if I'm ready. And a driving examiner will be able to give you some uh, advice about uh, you know, the, the areas that you need to strengthen in order to be ready for a road test. All right. Uh, so Corey got that video up. Thanks for that, Nicholas. I have a learner's permit and trouble staying centered on the road. Any tips? Yes, Nicholas. Uh, Corey will find the video on how to stay centered in the lane. Essentially, what you need to do, Nicholas, is look farther down the road, look for traffic lights, follow other traffic, and all of that will help you to stay centered in the road. Uh... All right, so I'll continue to answer questions. I'm gonna do the presentation first. I'll do the presentation and then I'll come back and I'll finish answering your questions and whatnot. And uh, Missouri, where did Missouri go? <laughs> yes, Easton said in Missouri. Six to 10 inches of snow. That's pretty crazy for April in Missouri. Uh, and I, suppose, I suspect that that is posing some challenges for drivers in that area who are trying to get up and down the road and go to work and those types of things so there you go so just give me one sec here and I'm gonna transition over to the PowerPoint here no sorry it's giving me grief here there we go Click on the right one there. There we go. Okay. And All right, so spring driving and talking about spring driving and obviously you're going to have to drive on in rain and those types of things because in some places we get a lot of rain in the spring and whatnot. And so you want to maintain your vehicle. You want to go through the engine compartment and check the fluids. You want to probably give it a wash, change your tires over to all weather tires unless of course you're living in Missouri with Easton where they have a considerable amount of snow on the roads. You want to leave your winter tires on. As well, here in BC they have extended 
the length of time that you have to leave winter tires in your vehicles for uh, mountain passes and those types of things. So we, you know, spring is a long time coming here, but it is, it is slowly coming. So know that uh, in terms of driving your vehicle and whatnot, be prepared for frost and ice on the roadways in the morning and keep, take note of uh, the temperature outside. Note if it's around freezing 36 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And for those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test and haven't been here before, my name is Rick August. Yes, I do have a PhD in legal history. For those of you who don't know, legal history is the study of courts, policing, and uh, prisons. And my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic. I was a truck driver through most of the 1990s. In the late 1990s, I became a driving instructor uh, with an expertise in air brakes. And uh, most places in North America and other places in the world, you have to be knowledgeable in air brakes and pass that as an endorsement for your license. I drove for Greyhound when I was in Australia. This is a picture of me uh, in 2003 when I still had some hair and was driving, learning to drive coaches. I was actually with a trainer at this, this juncture. And uh, in 2006 in Australia, I completed my doctorate from the University of Melbourne, as I said, in, with a specialty in policing as it relates to traffic and the transition between horse traffic, horse-drawn traffic and motor traffic at the turn of the 20th century. So that's essentially me and who I've been. And I started my uh, YouTube channel there a couple of years ago and uh, it has been wildly more successful than I thought it was ever going to be. So, yes, so some of the, the changes that come with spring, obviously warmer weather, which all of us enjoy. I'm actually sitting in a t-shirt tonight. A uh, little cool, but uh, you know, it is possible to sit in a t-shirt tonight. <laughs> uh, we have longer days, more sunshine. It's uh, 6.15 here in British Columbia in Vernon and uh, it's still nice and sunny and it probably will be till about 8.30. Uh, one of the other things, as I mentioned before, the line markings on the roadways can be difficult to see in the spring because they've been worn out by plows and sand and those types of things. Uh, if the roadways haven't been cleaned yet, there's lots of dirt on the roads and that sort of thing. And people tend to drive faster because the roads are clear and better days and more sunshine and those types of things. And there's more traffic on the roadway, more pedestrians, more cars, more bicycles, more motorcycles. And all of those vehicles are beginning to come out here in the northern hemisphere further south as in Missouri they still have snow so if you're doing a road test at this time of the year now you need to know that uh, some of the discretion and some of the um, less exact measures that were implemented in the winter time have now are now no longer in place now you have to make sure that you stop at the correct position on the roadway and that could be challenging because of uh, indiscernible road markings that I said have been worn out uh, space management, you have to have good space management if you're going to take a road test in the spring. And you have to take note of more pedestrians on the roadway in the spring. And as I mentioned earlier here when I was answering one of the questions about passing a road test and the fundamentals of any road test, regardless of class, regardless of where it is in the world, the four components, as you can see there at the bottom in the red, speed management, space management, observation, and communication. And those are the four fundamentals. And if you're having trouble with a road test or passing a road test, know that over at the Smart Drive Test website, there is Pass Your Road Test First Time. It's a course that I have. Uh, you can pick that up for about half the price of taking a road test and uh, guaranteed that you'll pass your road test uh, within 60 days of taking the course and taking a road test. So that's available as well. If that might be an option for you. All right, so vehicle preparation. Uh, one of the things you wanna do in the spring is we wanna have a nice spring cleaning of our house. We also wanna have a nice spring cleaning of our vehicles. And uh, when the vehicles are clean on the inside and we've done uh, due diligence of going and vacuuming, and a lot of these car washes now are providing free vacuum services uh, you know, to draw you in and upsell you and sell you a clean car. Uh, it just, a clean car makes a car feel safer. So take some time and clean all the junk out, all the winter stuff and those types of things. Clean the glass and whatnot. And one of the videos this week I was talking about glare and I was talking about driving at sunrise and sunset and the disparate light levels in the sky as opposed to what's in the landscape. And one of the comments that came back uh, was that to clean the, the windscreen on your vehicle, I, I didn't mention that, but that is a, a, an excellent point that when it gets sunny out, you wanna keep the glass clean on your vehicle and that way it's going to be easier to drive and you're gonna have less fatigue while you're driving. As well, check the windshield wipers and uh, you might even want to invest in some Rain-X 
and uh, I'll put it down in the description here. I don't, it's not down there right now, but if you uh, head over to Amazon, I have a smart drive test store and there's uh, some recommended products that you can buy there. And one of those is Rainex and Rainex is actually quite good because it uh, goes right in your windshield washer fluid and it will cause uh, the rain to sheet off your windshield and make it easier for you to see and whatnot. Uh, the other thing, uh, give your vehicle a good clean outside and also give it a coat of wax and that will keep it nice and clean and make it easy to wash throughout the summer and keep it clean and whatnot. The other thing you want to check in the spring is you want to check uh, your tires and make sure you have good quality tires, all weather tires and whatnot. And uh, one of the, you know, there's certain things in life that I believe that you should buy quality and you should not scrimp on. One of those things is windshield wipers and other is tires garden hose and shaving cream. I really believe that you should have good quality shaving cream for those of us shaving our face and shaving our legs. So uh, quality tires and I am a firm believer in Michelin's and I'm working really hard to get the uh, interview up that I did with Gary here at Tireland and Vernon and he's got some great information about tires and whatnot. Ensure proper tire pressure. Now there's a couple of places that you can find the proper tire pressure for your vehicle. One is on the driver's door sill, the other is in the owner's manual. And uh, I have been to several tire shops and uh, you know some of them say 32 pounds per square inch uh, in your tires on my vehicle. Uh, I think is, that's around 200 kilopascals. We don't measure in kilopascals so I don't really know for example exactly you'd have to look that up. You know, but have good tire pressure, and if you don't know what the tire pressure is, uh, talk to your mechanic, and they can help you with that as well. And make sure you have adequate tread depth. And uh, in the interview with Gary, one of the, one of the things he was saying was is that it's different tread depths for summer and different tread depths for winter. Uh, in the summer, you are allowed two thirty seconds of an inch, and in the winter, you are allowed one. Uh, five thirty seconds of an inch is the minimum tread depth. So essentially, in the summertime, you need. Uh, two millimeters of tread in the winter time you need minimum of four millimeters of tread but you know I just recommend that you have really good tires and if you're not sure about the quality of your tires go to a tire shop and get them to check uh, the quality of your tires and how much tread and see if that they're acceptable. Safe driving habits that you can implement and this is essentially the Smith's base cushion system but we can't call it that anymore. Uh, one of the things you want to do is you want to look farther down the road and uh, this is the fundamentals of defensive driving. It still is the fundamentals of defensive driving. So aim high in your steering, keep your eyes moving and essentially that was what I was saying is part of uh, passing a road test is observation and that observation in terms of keeping your eyes move is moving is shoulder checks, looking far down the road, scanning the instrument panel, checking your mirrors and doing all of that on a regular basis so that you are scanning your mirrors and looking down the road and those types of things every eight to 10 seconds. Uh, make sure that other drivers see you uh, through eye contact. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, you know, cover the brake and make sure that you don't go if, if you're not sure what's gonna happen or what the other driver is doing. Uh, and uh, make sure they see you. <laughs> if you watch the video, uh, you know, your life can change in an instant. The Veda uh, video that I put up this week, uh, you know, crossing the road, and I was trying to get eye contact with the driver, but the driver decided that he or she was going to charge me in their pickup truck. And, uh, you know, I, I, when the police asked me if I got the license plate number, I said, no, no, I didn't get the license plate number. I was too busy trying to get out of the way. So, <laughs> yeah, so make sure they see you. And sometimes even if they do see you, they're still going to go and, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, take the right away. So give them the right away. Uh, when you're driving in busy traffic, and again, this goes back to the question that was asked about, you know, how to drive in busy traffic. Make sure you leave yourself an out and you can always control the space in front of your vehicle. And again, make sure you get the big picture. Make sure you're looking not just on the roadway, but on both sides of the roadway, looking for pedestrians and people on scooters and bicycles and those types of things while you're driving. And that video continue that keeps coming up. <laughs> motorcycles and bicycles. So yes, now that we're in spring, we have motorcycles, we have bicycles, we have pedestrians, and we have uh, people on scooters. Uh, people who have mobili mobility challenges and are on electric scooters, and I've seen them on the roadway numerous times. Uh, one of my pet peeves in terms of bicycles are these recumbent bicycles and I do understand that some people who ride recumbent bicycles have mobility challenges and can't uh, ride the bicycle uh, and uh, but they are really low they're below the door uh, the passenger doors windows which I find really difficult and if they don't have a flag on it I mean it's really 
quite dangerous in traffic. I think it's a very high risk vehicle to have on the roadway. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with spring coming on and those types of things, we're going to have more emergency vehicles because we have more crashes in the summertime than we do in the wintertime. And if you encounter an emergency vehicle, you need to move over to the closest shoulder and that may not be the right shoulder or the left shoulder. It may be the opposite sides of the shoulders. Now know as well that uh, most places in North America and other countries in the world now have move over laws. So if there's emergency vehicles on the side of the road or tow trucks and whatnot, you need to move over and give them some space as you're going past. Uh, some volunteer firefighters I know in Ontario have green flashing lights uh, when they're responding to a call and going to the fire station and whatnot. And uh, for those of you watching, if you have any uh, volunteer firefighters, leave me a comment. We can talk about that as well. And uh, if you're watching on the replay, by all means, uh, leave me a comment about volunteer firefighters, uh, you know, uh, responding to emergency calls and then what color the lights are on their vehicles and whatnot. And, you know, just in keeping with that, uh, something somebody reminded me of a couple of weeks ago was is that uh, funeral possessions, we need to give the right of way to funeral possessions. Uh, that's a custom here in North America, and it's just a, you know, a sign of respect when we stop and wait for funeral processions to go by. Uh, one of the other things about emergency vehicles, they often travel in groups. So if there's an ambulance that comes out very soon behind it, oftentimes there's going to be a fire truck or there's going to be a, a police vehicle or whatnot. So know that as well and then finally if you are sitting at an intersection you may have to turn the corner or if you're in a roundabout you may have to go through the roundabout or whatnot and uh, sometimes uh, in terms of emergency vehicles if you are at an intersection it might just be easier just to stay put uh, they might be able to weave their way around and get through the intersection uh, without you moving so that might be the other thing now as in Missouri, they're having lots of snow there, so take note of the weather. Know that there's going to be ice and snow at higher elevations or, or in the south, as is the case this week in the, in the east uh, and in the south. And in BC's interior, as I mentioned previously, they, do, they have extended the length of time that you have to have winter tires on your vehicles to proceed through the mountain passes and whatnot. But simply, you know, be prepared for winter if you're heading out into rural areas and those types of things and know before you head out. I mean, you can check the weather, you can check uh, here in British Columbia, it's Drive BC, but there are lots of websites in different parts of the world that you can check and get the weather and road conditions before you head out. Okay, and as well, uh, with spring and summer coming on, know that construction crews are gonna be out. They're gonna be out fixing the roads. There are going to be potholes on the roadways and in some places, potholes are going to be diff you know, much more uh, prevalent than they are in other places. Some of this road construction is going to have detours and whatnot, and you'll have to follow the signs and pay attention to those. You may have to follow directions of flaggers and whatnot, so take note of all of that with spring coming on. And then finally, the other thing that may happen if you're driving in uh, rural areas is animals on roadways and whatnot. So take note of all of that while you're driving here in the spring and enjoying the lovely sunshine and warmer weather. So if you got a road test coming up in the next couple of weeks, good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. All right, so just transition back over here and I'll answer some questions that anybody has about passing road tests and whatnot. Oop, just about got it, there we go. Samantha, you came back. There you are. <laughs> Y3R86. There you go. Uh, yes, 380. Yeah, that was a horrible tragedy with the bus and uh, the tractor trailer unit there in Saskatchewan with the hockey team. It was That was just awful. Uh, I was reading the newspaper report the other day, but unfortunately there hasn't been anything released yet in terms of what happened on the, uh, in the crash and what the circumstances were, but little doubt it had to be at highway speeds due to the, you know, the fatality, the number of fatalities that occurred because of that bus crash. Now, some of you may or may not know, but in late, in the late 1980s, there were two uh, really awful bus crashes in Australia and there were two of them within a very short period of time. They were in about six or eight weeks of one another. Uh, the first one was a, a coach and a tractor trailer unit and the tractor trailer unit, somebody fell asleep, either the bus driver or the truck driver fell asleep. And essentially what happened was is that the bus, the truck went down the side of the bus and the rhubarb on the front of the 
bus or the bull bar rather basically opened the side of the bus up and everybody on the side of that bus was killed uh, and the one 68 weeks later essentially two coaches collided head-on on a rural road and uh, essentially everything in the front of the bus back to this seat five disintegrated in the crashes and what happened was is uh, a couple of things came out of that crash you know unfortunately uh, one of the things that happened was is that they had leg bolted the seats to the floor in the bus and when the two buses collided the seats lifted up out of the floor and the leg bolts essentially were you know jagged points in the bus and everybody came forward and was essentially eviscerated with these leg, leg bolts so they learned that they had to bolt the seats down uh, in the bus and the other awful thing that happened in that bus crash and the reason that people perished in the bus crash was because they couldn't get the people out of the buses because what had happened is is because the front doors essentially had been disintegrated in the crash and they the emergency exits are the windows well the windows on a coach are six feet off the ground well they had to build scaffolding beside the buses in order to lift people off the buses and it took them a couple of hours before they were able to build that scaffolding to get people off the buses so they were they were very horrible bus crashes often are okay tommy any tips for cleaning a car with leather interior i'm getting ready to clean out my car soon my car is black on the outside and i find it so hard to keep it clean it is yes it is um one of the things tommy is is that if you go to canadian tire or um yeah i don't know what i forget whether you're in canada or in the united states apologies about that uh you can get leather cleaner uh car interior leather cleaner and just you know give it a good vacuum and then wash it um you know with a damp cloth wipe as much as you can off and then treat it with this leather uh, treatment stuff uh, product that you can buy at any sort of auto shop or uh, you know auto part shop or those types of things and that'll help you to keep it clean and then the the car on the outside unfortunately black is pretty tough to keep clean most of the time but if you apply a good coat of wax to the vehicle that's going to help you to keep it clean on the outsides for sure all right Uh, Easton, if you can if you can buff out the scratch on your windshield, uh, that's probably going to be less expensive. However, one of the things you got to keep in mind is that uh, it's going to compromise how clear the windshield is. Eventually, you're going to get to a point where a windshield on your vehicle, if it gets older, it's sometimes it's just easier just to replace it. That way, it's going to be cleaner. Uh, you're going to have better vision through the windshield. Like my windshield is just completely cracked, and it needs to be replaced. And that's the next piece that I'm going to do after I finish the exhaust. So then I'll pretty much have a new vehicle and whatnot. So there we go. Uh, okay, so 380 green lights in Ontario and blue in Pennsylvania for volunteer firefighters. That's great information. Yeah, and uh, as uh, 380 said there, in terms of volunteer firefighters responding to emergencies and trying to get to the station so that they can get on the fire trucks and get out to the station, any help that uh, other vehicles on the roadway can, uh, you know, give out, that really helps them out and whatnot. So, yes, thank you, thank you, Tommy. Yeah, for sure. If if there's a funeral procession, by all means, just pull over and wait, and uh, you know. Let them go by. It's just a, it's a really nice sign of respect. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Easton. If that's what if you're having a lot of glare on your windshield, then it's probably better if you just get it replaced. I mean, you know, for if you if you have collision on your vehicle, your insurance includes collision. Uh, I think it's just a matter of the deductible, hundred or two hundred dollars, whatever your collision is. Now, you know, I don't have collision on my Honda because it's so old, but. Uh, you know, it's only $500 to get my windshield replaced, so it's not too expensive. Okay, uh, 3R86, mock test before road test. How many should I take before initial test? Okay, so 86, if you've been practicing for your road test and you feel fairly confident in terms of your slow speed maneuvers uh, and driving on the roadway and left turns and right turns and those types of things, and you feel like you've got the four components in place for your road test, you know, observation, communication, speed management and space management what i suggest is just booking you know a 90 minute lesson with a driving instru instructor and you'll need to book that three to four weeks out because these driving schools are pretty busy but if you have a 90 minute road test with them and you say listen i just want you to do a mock road test and they'll do a mock road test for 20 minutes or half an hour and then they'll work with you on the um 
the skills and techniques that are not in place that need to be you know strengthened for you to pass a road test. The other thing that they're going to do in terms of the driving school, if the driving school is within close proximity of the licensing center where you're going to take your test, uh, they'll take you on the route where you're going to take the, the test. They're not necessarily going to say that to you, but they will do that. So that's the other piece uh, that that little driving lesson is going to help you out with is, is that you'll get some familiarity with the exact test route in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Edgar, uh, how old was I when I was got my, well, I couldn't wait to get my driver's license. And, uh, so I was 17 when I got my driver's license. Of course, when I got my driver's license, you know, 400 years ago when dinosaurs roamed the world, uh, we didn't have the graduated licensing system in place. So it was essentially, you could go and get a learner's and then two, two weeks later, you could go and get your, your license. But unfortunately there were some delays <laughs> in terms of me getting my license. But once I got started, uh, you know, then later in my twenties, I got my tractor trailer license and whatnot. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So Tommy Oshawa. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. So yeah, you can just go down to Canadian Tire and get some leather product and that will help you to clean the seats and whatnot. But you know, just wipe them with a damp cloth first and then you can treat them and all of that will help to make the seats better and whatnot. All right, Samantha. Okay. Okay, Paulo, is it correct to hold the steering? Oh, okay, yes, Paulo, uh, 10 and two. Yes, that's a good position on your steering wheel. It kind of depends a little bit about the configuration of the steering wheel on the vehicle that you're driving because sometimes, you know, now they're advocating eight, eight and four, but I find eight and four just not enough control and you're basically on the bottom of the steering wheel. The reason that they're now kind of some driving manuals are saying eight and four is because of the airbag. And if the airbag comes out and you're at nine and three or 10 and two, it's going to do damage to your arms. But I don't really, you know, I don't know whether that's true or not. You know, it's, I don't think you have as much control of the vehicle at eight and four. So 10 and two, I think as long as you've got both hands in the steering wheel, sort of in that, you know, nine and three and 10 and two position, I think you're going to be fine in terms of your road test for sure. So yeah, that's, that's a good question. Okay. Okay. Uh, Felder, I have a question. What does D5, D4, D3? Okay. So drive five, drive four, drive three. Those are essentially gears in the automatic transmission. And Felder, what you want to do is uh, if you have drive, just drive, uh, you want to put it in that because then the automatic transmission will shift automatically. Now these other gears, oftentimes an automatic transmission, you're not going to use those gears. I mean, unless you're in a parking lot or towing a trailer and getting started or something like that. That's a good question. Uh, the other thing for more information, Felder, what you want to do is uh, look in the owner's manual for the car or look it up on the internet and that will give you specific information about that vehicle and where those, um, what, what you can use those different gears for. But most of the time in automatic transmission, you're just going to put it into drive and you're going to drive the vehicle and the transmission will do what it's designed to do. Okay. All right. <laughs> stove nasty how many times i i've done it a few times yes i i have been i've lost my cool yes sam is here how are you sam uh sam jericho arroyo uh works for rookie auto driving school in the bronx and he also has a youtube channel check out his youtube channel if you're in new york and uh get some very specific and very good information about passing your road test there in new york in the bronx Okay, so yes, definitely shoulder checks for the purposes of a road test. Thank you very much, Sarah. That's very lovely. And Iron Jam, you are most welcome, my friend. Okay. <laughs> uh, and most of those times that I told people they were number one when I was driving, when I was driving truck, and I was very tired most a lot of the time because most of the time I was quite tired driving truck. So it does happen even to the best of us. There we go. Okay, um, 
Sarah F, I have a stone chip the size of a chickpea. Will this be an issue for your road test? Uh, what I suggest, Sarah, is if you can go and get it fixed, it's only about $50 to get the stone chip fixed. And the other thing that's gonna do is gonna prevent your windshield from cracking. So I would take it in as quickly as possible. If it hasn't already started cracking, then you can get that fixed and that you won't even know that there's a chip on your windshield. And it's something I would strongly suggest because I didn't get my windshield done quick enough and it's cracked all the way across. And actually there's a video here I did on it about a year ago. So I don't know whether Corey could find that, but uh, yeah, Kyle's here. Hey Kyle. How is, you must be, Kyle Crasto is at the University of Toronto, and you must be near exams, either done exams or in the middle of exams. So it being the 6th of April, you're probably in the beginning of exams, or did you have any exams, Kyle? Okay. Okay. Oregon. You need some practice with right turns and speed control. One of the things I might suggest, Oregon, is you may need, you may want to revisit the fundamentals. Essentially what I want you to do is look at the video on learn to drive, how to learn to drive, and it gives you some exercises to do in the parking lot. I might suggest you go and rent some of those 36 inch, one meter tall pylons and go back to a parking lot and just practice, just re, um, revisit the fundamentals and that might help you with your speed control and your right hand turns. And then of course, go back and practice those a little bit more and make sure you have the vehicle slowed down before you actually commit to the turn. So on right hand turns on smaller intersections, 10 to 12 uh, kilometers an hour, 10, or sorry, 10 to 12 miles an hour, and then sort of eight to 10 kilometers an hour. Make sure you're slowed right down for those right hand turns and looking through the turn where you want to go and that's gonna help you with your right hand turns. Okay. Uh, somebody asked me about, <laughs> uh, Easton driving knobs, suicide knobs. They're illegal. You can't use them on vehicles. If you look in the drivers in the highway tra traffic act, uh, you can't use uh, those suicide knobs on vehicles. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Edgar. No, Edgar, you have to get a learner's permit first before you can go for a road test. Unfortunately, uh, depending on where you are, you're gonna have to go through the whole kind of graduated licensing program and make sure you have know what the criteria is for that and whatnot. So yes, um, creative space. I'm trying to get my license before I start as a junior in college in the fall semester. Uh, I keep making wide turns during practice. How would I fix this? Okay, so creative space, again, look at the video on uh, how to learn how to drive and it'll give you exercises to do in the parking lot go and get some of those 36 inch one meter tall pylons and that'll help you to control um, the primary controls of the vehicle and work and work to have better control of the primary controls the steering wheel the brake and the throttle and that will help you with all of that and that'll help you with doing wide turns the other thing is what's causing you to do wide turns is that the faster the vehicle goes, the less sharp it turns. So make sure that you are slowed down before you start executing the turn. That way you're gonna have more control on the turn because if you're going too fast, the vehicle doesn't turn as sharp, you don't have as much control, you don't have as much time to react. So make sure that you're slowed down to the speed that you need to be slowed down before you start working on the turn, okay? That's one of the, the common errors for new drivers uh, when they're learning how to drive is they're going too fast through the curve. Uh, Juve, uh, the permit test doesn't change. However, one of the things about the test is, is that they have five or six different variations of it. So essentially what happens if you're doing your test on a computer, there's 200 questions in the question bank, it'll pull out 30 of those 200 questions at random. So each test is going to be somewhat different that you're going to get, you're never gonna see the same test again. And the other thing with computer software is that it will randomize the question answers on each test so it will seem somewhat different. So make sure you carefully read that. And as well, uh, Corey might be able to find the uh, video on how to pass a knowledge test. And also don't read the driver's manual for cover to cover if you're doing the knowledge test. Go and find practice driving test questions on the websites and there's some on mine as well. And do the practice driving test questions. Don't use the practice driving test questions to test your knowledge and ability. Rather, 
use them as a learning tool to identify the gaps in your knowledge and those questions you got wrong simply go back to the manual look up that information and then go back and do the test when you're getting consistently 80 or 90 percent on the test that's when you're ready to go and write your permit test all right And we're confident you're going to get your license there, Creative Space. You're going to do that. <laughs> Vidya, thank you so much. I'm glad that you got your license. Congratulations. That's really a great effort on your part. So, okay. Um, 86, yes, maintaining your speed. That is a bit of a challenge, no doubt. Even I have trouble keeping speed, and that's why I'm, I'm such a huge cruise control advocate. But for the purposes of a road test, you can't use cruise control. So look at the video on controlling the throttle and Corey might be able to find that for you and put that up for you. Uh, and uh, you know, just practice with it. Um, just go to a parking lot and sit in the parking lot and try and hold the throttle at maybe 1500 RPM or 2000 RPM. And then you know, just bang on the throttle and be a bit aggressive with it. You know, drive down the parking lot and you know, put the throttle right on the floor, feel what it feels like but it's just a bit of practice in terms of what you need to do in terms of controlling the throttle and that will help you to maintain your speed the other thing you can try and do is um, work on maintaining a distance from other vehicles and know that your speed is going to fluctuate and whatnot so <laughs> okay uh what i'll do sam is i'll put your youtube channel down in the description there and uh, then they can have a look down in the description. For anybody watching on the replay and wants some more information in terms of uh, driving in the Bronx, driving in the boroughs in New York, uh, New York there, uh, Sam can certainly help you with that. <laughs> Oregon, yes, we all want to be perfect in terms of driving, but the, 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 problem, the, the challenge with driving, not the problem, the challenge with driving is, is that driving is so complex that it's difficult even for those of us who are veteran drivers to do it perfectly without making errors. And even the experts, the people who do this kind of training all the time know that people make errors because, you know, when we get into a vehicle, it can be any time of the day and, you know, we can be sort of in any emotional state and, you know, there's so much going on, especially at complex intersections in urban areas and those types of things. Essentially, yes, you can do most of the things right most of the time and you need to put habits in place that will keep you safe so that when you do make mistakes, you've got lots of space around your vehicle that is going to compensate for that error that you've made in judgment. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that helps us out in terms of, you know, being veteran drivers is that we've de developed the habits that keep us safe when we do make errors because every now and again, unfortunately, we do make errors. Okay. Uh, yes, Easton, there is a video. I did one and uh, I don't even know what it is off the top of my head. I did, it was one of the live streams I did a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago. And Corey might be able to find that for you. <laughs> well, good luck on any exams that you do have, Kyle. Do you have a bunch of papers that you have to write and whatnot to finish up for the, for the term? All right. Um, Okay, creative space. Also, have another, how do you make the left turn stay on the left lane? For some reason, when I do left turns, I end up in the right lane. Okay, well, first of all, creative space, one of the things you're working against is social driving because most people who make left-hand turns will end up in the right lane. Again, you have to manage your speed through the left-hand turn. And depending on the size of the intersection, your speed is going to be anywhere from sort of 12 to 20 miles an hour or... 15 to 30 kilometers an hour and you need to manage your speed for the purposes of a left-hand turn and if you can do that and get your speed down then what's going to happen is uh, you're going to be able to look where you need to go and you're going to need to stay into that left-hand lane especially if you're going for a road test because if you don't go for a road if you don't stay if you don't go left to left or right to right if you're making a right-hand turn on a road test you're not going to be successful so know that for the purposes so i would just practice that consistently that you need to left to left, right to right, okay? Uh, <laughs> yes, it would. All right, okay. Okay, Samantha, how much do written tests, I'm not understanding, 25 or 40 questions on written tests, I'm not sure what questions are being asked. 
Okay, so Samantha, most uh, G1 written tests, so first most permit tests have 50 questions of which you have to get 80%. So I think 80% is 35 questions. You have to get 35 of the 50 correct. I think can somebody, maybe somebody can do the math for me on that, but you have to get 80% to pass the road test, uh, to pass the knowledge test, right? And as well, make sure that you read all of the answers. Make sure you pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer uh, in terms of uh, what's going on as well make sure you look at the diagrams because this, a lot of these computer-based uh, knowledge tests for the purposes of your driver's license are going to be computer-based and they're going to have diagrams and those types of things and you are gonna have to pick the best scenario so know that as well for the purposes of passing a road test um, okay Liam Forty correct. There you go. Thanks, Easton. Uh, creative space. You're most welcome, Liam. Okay, you're you have some trepidation around people not giving you uh, space when you're doing a lane change. One of the things you need to do, Liam, is you need to signal early. If you got minimum three flashes on the signal, other drivers are definitely going to help you to create space. And and the other. Uh, technique that you need to do Liam for the purposes of doing a lane change is because you're moving on a diagonal from one lane to the other you're covering more space and so to maintain the speed limit or the, or the flow of traffic you need to speed up slightly and that's somewhat counterintuitive for new drivers is to speed up slightly because the tendency is that you want to slow down so don't slow down so actually a little bit of throttle when you're changing lanes and what I might suggest for to you is to uh, just get on a stretch of road where there aren't any other vehicles so you know early in the morning or later in the evening and then just practice changing lanes back and forth when there isn't other traffic around and then that way you can practice just accelerating ever so slightly when you're moving from one lane to the other so three flashes count the flashes one two three do your shoulder check look forward shoulder check again and then start moving the vehicle over if if the way is clear excuse me okay so there you go Easton and 25 uh, correct questions in most states okay so for the knowledge test we're back to talking about the knowledge test there again uh, okay video uh, I had a follow-up on a question on a school bus laws under your respective video please take a look at it when you find time absolutely video yeah I'll get a look at that video my apologies for being late on that it uh, it has been a busy week you are most welcome Samantha anything we can do to get you through your road test here and be successful <laughs> come to Wisconsin I've been to Wisconsin. I actually, uh, in the 1990s, I actually delivered cow mats to Wisconsin so that the dairy cattle would produce more milk. That was one of the things I delivered to was the state, the great state of Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, so you had your commercial license. Uh, uh, PH, where are you in the world? Are you in the States? Or are you in Canada in one of the provinces here? Just let me know where you are. And I could probably give you a, a more detailed answer about uh, what you'll need to do. Because if you're in Ontario, you're going to have to write a knowledge test. And that probably that consists of uh, whatever class of license you have, whether that's school bus or straight truck or tractor trailer unit. And you're going to have to do an air brake test as well. And then it consists of a knowledge test for general driving as well. So that's what you need to do in order to maintain your uh commercial license in the province of Ontario and it could be that somewhere else I know here in British Columbia there isn't anything uh, some places you're also gonna have to do a medical as well that's the other piece okay so you're in California yeah you may have to write a knowledge test and you probably have to take a medical in order in terms of uh, doing that uh, that should be fairly easy information to um, to to find on their website okay but uh, Send me send me an email rick at smart drive test and I'll look that up for you and you can figure that out. Okay <laughs> Sarah, that's pretty funny. I get lost in grocery stores too funny <laughs> uh, That's funny. 
Every time somebody talks about grocery stores, I always think of uh, the Eddie Izzard skit when he's talking about entering grocery stores and that feeling of fresh because every time you go into the grocery store, all you see is produce and fresh produce and whatnot. He says, you never enter the grocery store and go into the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so sense of direction. One of the things you can do in terms of sense of direction is look at a map, figure out where north is in the city, and... So once you figure out north, then you can figure out south, east, east, east is over there, west. So north, south, west, and east. And then perhaps the other thing you can do is get a compass and put that in your vehicle and get a sense of which direction you're going. And then that way, when you're driving around the city or driving in a place, no, just take note whether you're going north, east, south, or west, right? And that will help you out in terms of directions and whatnot. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, you know, a sense of direction is something that you could learn, potentially you could, uh, or it's something that we just innately have. It's kind of like customer service. Can you teach customer service or is it something that we innately have? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay, what tips do you have for reversing? Creative Space actually have a lot of tips on reversing. There's actually a whole playlist on reversing. And the only caveat that I'll say about the reversing videos is one of the videos I did tell you you could take your seatbelt off. If you're taking a road test and reversing, do not take your seatbelt off. Leave your seatbelt on for the duration of the test, okay? But after you get your license, in most places in the world, you are allowed to take your seatbelt off. You don't have to wear it to reverse. But for the purposes of a road test, <laughs> leave your seatbelt on. Okay, Billy, uh, retaking my test on Tuesday in California in, the diff in a different city. Last time was a fluke as my instructor planned to fail me before driving. As I drove, she continued to yell at me. It was, oof. I just, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I really cringe when I hear driving examiners and other people yelling at students. It's just one of the worst things that you can do. So, okay, there we go. Um. Yeah, you know, now saying that, I do want to say that most driving uh, examiners are really quite good and they're not, they don't yell at students and those types of things. But unfortunately, there are some that kind of, you know, leave a bad color for the rest of them, unfortunately. So, yeah, if you do, had a bad experience, that's unfortunate. So, yeah. Okay, so I think we're getting near the end here. We're going to wrap up here. If you're watching on the replay, by all means, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already to Smart Drive Test, we'd appreciate if you uh, considered subscribing. Uh, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license, veteran drivers to remain crash-free, and CDL drivers to start a career as a truck or bus driver. And I'm always available. Leave comments in the comment section. I'll try and get to those as quickly as I can and answer those for you. I try to get on there every day and answer questions for people. So... Uh, Nicholas, uh, what do you need to know for the road test? You need to know that there's four basic components regardless of class of license or wherever you're taking your road test in the world. Uh, observation, communication, speed management, and space management. Those are the four components, okay? So just to reiterate those, uh, speed management, you need to do the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever speed is less. Space management, you need to stop at the correct position on the roadway when you're stopping in traffic and those types of things at stop sign, the intersection, traffic lights and whatnot. Uh, you need to not get near any other fixed objects on the roadway and other traffic. And then observation, you need to observe clearly, shoulder checking, looking far down the road, 360 degree scans when you're uh, reversing and slow speed maneuvers and whatnot. And uh, communication. You need to use your lights, uh, horn, hand signals, appropriate hand signals, get eye contact with the drivers and position of your vehicle on the roadway. So those are four basic components. All right. And you are welcome, everybody. Uh, Liam, you need to go slowly when you're changing lanes in standing traffic. So nice and slow, just keep your signal on for the whole time until somebody helps you to create a space and then just slowly move over to the other lane. Okay. Uh, Johnny, I'm not sure what you're asking me there. The car, he would fail me. Okay, can you re... Oh, sorry. Okay, there's the rest of it. I had an issue with, because he wanted me to start the car, but he didn't have a seatbelt. I asked him three times, and he turned and gave... <laughs> oh, oh, that's... I'm sorry to hear that, Johnny. That's just... That's awful. Yeah, they really should be putting their seatbelt on without giving you grief about them putting their seatbelts on. Okay... 
86, you are most welcome. We're glad that we can help you out with getting your license and being successful. So thank you everybody who showed up, everybody who's asked questions. It makes this really interactive and really great and sharing your stories. And uh, again, leave a comment down in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to Smart Drive Test, consider subscribing. And uh, for those of you who passed a road test in the last week, congratulations on that. For those of you having a road test in the next week or so, good luck on your road test. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.